So, I'm going to be playing some Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts this time. I feel that it is only appropriate with the coming Dreadnoughts in the next patch, so... Uh, I have no idea what to do here. I guess design a Dreadnought. You know what? That makes sense. I'll go with Mixed Technologies. I haven't played this in a while, so I don't really have a clue what I am doing, but I'll figure it out. I think I'll take long. I have an unhealthy love of casemate guns, even though I know that they are certainly not very optimal. Time for my unhealthy obsession with casemate guns to rear it. Really? That's disappointing. Well, maybe, maybe the wide hull would be better for this, actually. I think it'll give much better firing arcs, and considering I am increasing the displacement significantly, that makes sense to me. Oh, I can place the... Okay, I, I'm starting to get an idea for what I'm going to do. Man, this is... This is not looking so good so far. <laughs> okay, 8-inch secondaries. I am glad I went with the wide. Yeah, that's going to be fun. So this one's much weaker, but it's more safe. Eh, screw it. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. I'm going to slow down my ship, actually. Mostly because I just am not good enough at tactics to actually make good decisions using my speed. Oh, are you building boats? Ah, yes. This time I am building boats rather than playing boats. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't have used the, uh, the Lightite one. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a mistake. Hey, it's the Bismarck. Yeah, I'm heading towards that kind of situation at the moment. I don't think I'm going to win this one. What do you guys think? So yeah, what to learn from this one? Uh, Lightite 2 is worth it. That's, that's about it. That's about all I learned. How are you not sinking? Um, lots and lots of bulkheads. And in fact, I just sunk one of them. Schwartz and her naval had those turrets flying off in the huge jets of fire. Oh yeah, that would be nice. I I remember a while back I sent a suggestion to Gaijin, and I was saying that shells hitting a ship should do like actual noticeable damage to a ship. Like, if I hit someone's 40mm Bofors mount with an 8-inch HE shell, it should straight up knock that whole mount off, like blow it into the air and have it sink into the water when it hits with a, like, you know, a plume of fire, a splash when it hits, all that kind of stuff. It would make the damage models a lot more kind of dynamic, while also making the battles just more visually interesting. Though it also comes with a lot of balance ramifications that are kind of hard to quantify all at once. When you hit a PT with a 100mm AG shell, the PT would just break in half and sink. They used to. They actually do have a damage model for like breaking in half. But the problem is, hull break becomes, became so rare that it just doesn't really happen anymore. At least when you'd expect it to. Like, I've hit a Freysha with a 152mm HE, the explosion's bigger than the ship, and it doesn't do anything. I like having permanently destroyed modules like AA mounts so it doesn't just feel like the ship is just as combat capable. When you reach a certain crew percentage, it just dies. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel about it. Make the models a lot more dynamic and make it feel like you're actually taking damage when you're taking damage, you know? The one problem I can see is that, well, if damaging AA mount, well, if damaging a ship was to destroy the AA mounts if you hit them, then that would be an indirect cast buff. And they've already nerfed anti-air to keep casts as effective as possible, even when a ship is fully armed. So they'd probably have to buff the effectiveness of the AA guns back up. But at that point, the problem is that aircraft would already be having to prey on disabled ships, which would effectively make it, the whole purpose of it, kill stealing. Which, I don't know, I think that would be perfectly fine to encourage teamwork if they adjusted the rewards to match. Because, like, if you get a reward for working together, like, you know, between a ship damaging AA and then a plane taking advantage of it, that would be pretty cool. But right now it's like, Oh, I almost killed someone, and then the plane took advantage of that. Now I get, like, almost no rewards. That's a little lame. 
Wow, I'm actually going to sink this light cruiser. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be sinking the BB, though. I, I don't think that's happening. Either of them, really. I wish the game would encourage multiple aircraft attacking a ship together instead of lone wolves. I don't know how they do that, though, and only one will get the kill. I think an easy way to fix that would be to take a page out of the single player and dynamic missions, where a player actually spawns with a squad, and there are three other aircraft in that squad in the same plane, and what happens is if the player gets shot down, they can then respawn in a different plane of, like, one of those squad things. But they might have to improve the AI to attack and sync. Like, imagine how much scarier it would be if you saw four AM-1s flying towards you and they all dropped torpedoes in just a wall. The thing is, I, I really hate fighting close air support personally, but I kind of don't like how it's implemented right now because I feel like no one likes it. Because for the aircraft player, it feels unfair, and for the ship player, it feels unfair, just in different ways for both of them. And I feel like there's ways to do it that would make both players happier. Because if you had a squadron instead of just a single plane, you could also buff AA performance a bit, make it feel less like it's just missing for the sake of the game saying, well, we need planes to be viable. And then, well, there's actual kind of stakes in the fight of it, and there would be more strategy than just, I fly in, drop a bomb, and hope he dies before he kills me. Though I suppose that would also be very hard to balance. I do hope that the introduction of Dreadnoughts has made Gaijin consider aircraft balance more. I think it actually will. Because it's kind of hard for them to ignore, like, hey, these ships like don't have any kind of anti-air weapons. We need to think about what we're doing here with them. And I'm going to predict that Gaijin will do something. I have no idea what, but I feel like they're going to have some kind of change to try to keep aircraft from just completely making Dreadnoughts obsolete. Maybe I'm being too trusting, but we will see. I am kind of hyped for the next update. There are some things I'm not particularly happy about regarding it. Like, I do feel like we are jumping a little too far at once with the ships. I, I feel like we need, you know, 6.0 for cruisers and not for dreadnoughts. But I think it's going to be fun. It'll, it'll be interesting, certainly. It's just kind of hard to predict what's going to happen with the meta, because that almost entirely depends on what choices Gaijin makes, which... They're not easy to predict. What I think they should do personally, though, they need to entirely work uh, rework how kill credit works in naval, in general, not just regarding planes, but everyone. Because my problem with it right now, it's like, let's say there's a ship, 100% crew. You shoot it a bunch, it goes down to 10% crew, exclusively from you. Someone else starts shooting it and manages to hit that last percent. They get all the kill credit while you get an assist. I think the kills should be rewarded to whoever deals the highest damage, or they could effectively make the elimination mechanic from, you know, games like Overwatch, where rather than, you know, kill and assist, it's more played a role in defeating the enemy, and then make the XP, well, XP, RP and SL rewards completely proportional to damage dealt, and allow it to overflow past the ship's actual value. Like, if you torpedo someone while they're at 5%, don't just have it equal to 5% of the crew from that. Kind of give more than just that. That would be a little lame. But yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. All I know is that this uh, ship, BB LaFranca, Lanfranco, it's uh, it's not working anymore. Uh, good old top speed of what? Two? One. <laughs> I feel like I can get these secondaries on target. Well, I can't get those ones on target. Well, and yeah, they seem to be working. I'll just leave it like this. Hope I can kill this la- Oh, dang. That was pretty sick. Yeah, he got to experience what I did. Take that. Justice. So that should bust the Bismarck. Yeah, except mine actually sunk some things, except for, like, one ship with a lucky ammo debt. This ship was both the Hood and the Bismarck. <laughs> It got hooded, and now it's getting bismarked. The most unlucky ship ever created. Is this guy about to get straight in the range of these three eight inches at point blank? I feel like that's not the smartest thing. You... Yeah, that wasn't a very good idea, now was it? <laughs> I knew my unhealthy obsession with casemates would make me, like, have a good game. It only seemed appropriate.
I mean, I seem locked at 12% structure and 8% float anyway. It's not like they're doing very much to me. It's like, hmm, yes, let's take this torpedo we try. Oh my gosh, I might do this. <laughs> I might do this. <laughs> they don't have torpedoes. At most, they have 9-inch guns. Ah, yes, you have escaped one side of my casemate guns just to expose yourself to the other side of my casemate guns. So, now, my ship is Hood, Bismarck, and Warspite, all at the same time. Now, the only question is, can I sink it in the 50 minutes I have left? Because, honestly, I'm not so sure. Come on, hit with the 12-inch. All it'll take is one flash fire and they're dead. That's all it would take. Okay, you're not going to get a flash fire when you shoot behind it. That's not how this works. The funny thing is, if this, like, actually happened, if this was an actual naval battle, this would be considered a huge loss for both sides, probably. <laughs> because this ship will never recover. It would take months to dig all the lead out of this thing. You would be better off stealing like the 15 pieces of undamaged scrap metal off this thing and just building a new battleship. Uh, another fire, come on. Oh man, I think I'm gonna do it. Wish asphalt just report. He lost his entire fleet to a crippled piece of floating debris. I did it! <laughs> that shouldn't have been possible. But I did it! <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's the best opening I can get to the stream. <laughs> that's the absolute best. <laughs> Design your own H class. I feel like I feel like this one would be very fun. Okay, so this is to the point of, like, lion class <laughs> in absurdity. Let's just, let's tone that down a little. Let's... Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, so the dispersion for this is going to be absurd no matter what I do. Okay, well, might as well then. I, I wonder now, can I create the Brooklyn? Uh, actually, no, this is going to be a Mogami battleship. <laughs> You'll see what I mean by that soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> this this is not a loadout you should ever use <laughs> what am i doing uh j just max everything this is an h class i don't need to explain anything 0 0.1 percent this is a balanced and optimal design nothing is wrong with this I, I can't get over whatever this thing is. Now, how about the secondary guns? Okay, th this design is sick, though. I love this. I love this so much. This is like those actual dual flak mounts they used, but, like, scaled up. That is that is sick, honestly. All right, so I think this is probably going to be it. I just need to slightly optimize the design. And by that... I mean, lower the top speed even more. <laughs> oh, man. How do you optimize this? I don't know. <laughs> I put more armor on it. <laughs> when Senator Tillman meets with Adolf Hitler. <laughs> don't forget Tojo having a, an, an audience at the, the board meeting, too. <laughs> this is terrible. All right, so I am back. And I am about ready to give this ship the honor it deserves. It's already breaking the dockyard, so it will be quite good at breaking our enemies. However, I got sent something <laughs> that I want to show on stream first, because oh my gosh, it is beautiful. Just look at this. What, what emotions does this make you feel? This, this is a true weapon of naval mass destruction. 
And now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. How far do these guns go? 46 kilometers? <laughs> okay. 11% chance to... You what? Oh, I think I'm getting six guns on target frontally because of the design. Actually, I'm going to turn off because I don't want to be in close range. Yeah, Germany would have won the war if they just built a tons of a ton of Prinz Regent Leopolds. Le Le Leopolds, I think. Germany would have just won the war if they built a ton of these, man. They sh Hitler should have recruited Senator Tillman. I feel like they would have made a good team. Write that down, write that down. <laughs> yeah, if, if Tillman had been bored after World War II, he would have been a Weraboo. <laughs> I, I, this is now my like historical head cannon. It just makes too much sense. Come on, get a hit with the 18 inch guns. I want to see what happens. <laughs> it bounced off the secondary tower. <laughs> They're adding 20 inch guns? Seriously? Okay, that sounds that sounds amazing. I'm going to have to stream so much more of this game. Super Yamato time. But when are the 22 inch guns coming? That's my question. Smith Deutsch Bias is performing admirably, I take it. Oh yes, this is the H class Mogami Tillman design. Those are all 18 inch. It's the most horrific looking monstrosity I've ever seen. Don't try to pretend you don't like it. You know as well as I do, it's amazing. I'll side with a blurst here. That is fair. That is very fair. That makes feelings about the Massachusetts getting wrecked by 15, 18 inch guns. It's not truly the Massachusetts. It has four turrets. It's a British Massachusetts. Well, once the Massachusetts goes down, I'm going to turn in because I think that close range suits me better than it suits them because my deck armor is actually rather thin it's my belt armor that's particularly resilient you know if my accuracy stays high enough i might actually be able to get a kill on this thing through um uh... <gasps> never mind don't need it i was going to say excessive fire i think that's enough damage that it no longer matters oh wait a second the objective is just to sink battleships I can start targeting their other battleship, and it doesn't even matter that they have the destroyers. And they're listing so I can shoot the deck armor easier. Okay, uh, Massachusetts is dead. I think this barrage will do it. Yep. Alright, that's sick. Uh, Texas, you're up. I could probably wipe this CA out of it. America, what are you doing? That's... It's it's like they wanted to make a Mogami, but they forgot the last turret. No, America, this is how you do it. <laughs> Congress funding ended before they could add that turret. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, though, in Congress. <laughs> Man, Massachusetts is still sinking. Oh, they have, like, oil effects in the water. That's that's sick. I love that. We okay. We need this effect in War Thunder. Imagine a BB with an A B X Y Z loadout. I I don't know how to feel about. It. Okay, what's a ship with an A B X Y Z loadout? Because I can't think of a specific thing. Is that like a reverse Mogami? That's really cursed. <laughs> I kind of want to split my fire onto these other ships for a second just to, like, destroy them because it wouldn't take very long. But I feel like it makes more sense to just go with the sure thing, kind of just remove Texas. You know, everyone wants me to remove Texas, I think. I might actually lose this. I, I just noticed I've taken a lot more damage than I thought. All right, time to go full in on Texas and see if I can structurally sink it before this goes really kind of sadly. <laughs> I should have maintained range. I, I should have maintained range. I feel like that would have won, but I just had to get in close. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, we were this close. Is that really not doing anything? Like, I know it's a harsh angle, but these are 18-inch guns. You'd think hitting, like, that curved part would do something. Well, as beautifully cursed as this design is, I kind of want to try something else and not spend a full hour doing that again. We tried the ironclad missions. I think I tried them and it really didn't work that well, but... Hmm... I'll try this, go like full firepower, I suppose, and just kind of see what I can do. Uh, 12 inch. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, of course that's overweight. Uh, I'll try this. I really don't have any options, though. Montana, what a fitting name. If I can fit a dual 12 inch, I feel like I basically just win. But that's going to be very difficult. Five knots. I mean, I don't really need that much speed if I can just win on virtue of firepower, I suppose. All right. It's time to see why I bought a 12-inch gun. Okay, that is slow. This better actually be worth it. Turn in. Angle, angle, angle. <laughs> I think I made the right choice. <laughs> okay. Okay, I made I made the right choice. <laughs> you know, I was wondering if that was a good idea. I think I think 12-inch guns are pretty effective against monitors now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, this this is what I was thinking cuz it's hard to pen each other. But if I just bring the bigger gun, then who cares? <laughs> we won! Uh, I don't know what to choose here. <laughs> I guess just the biggest one. And I think you guys all know what design I am going to replicate. I just had an even worse idea. Can I place for <laughs> Guys? I I have a better idea than what I was building. <laughs> I, I have a much better idea. <laughs> You're turning your PP into a floating bomb. <laughs> Kitakami evolved. This is the Kimikot Kimi Iowa. This is an optimal ship design, and you should never let anyone tell you otherwise. This is how America won the war. They don't want you to know about this, because they worry that other people would build this same design, and then they would be able to beat the entire U.S. military at once. There's a secret clause in the Geneva Convention that banned this. But it's so dangerous, they didn't even tell us they banned it. I hate this. <laughs> I hate it, and I love it. This is just... The funny thing is, this might actually be very effective. <laughs> I can't wait to see... And just toss on the underwater torpedo launchers. We need those extra three, or we're not going to have enough. And better yet, uh, what has, like, the best stats for torpedoes? Uh, speed, minus range, no. No. Yes. 24 inch oxygen torpedoes. <laughs> this is optimal ship design. You can't convince me otherwise. This is how ships were meant to be built. I I, I wonder though, how can I get the highest possible speed? Mm, no, I, I'm not. I'm not willing to sacrifice a 18 inch. I, I feel like that's heresy. No armor. Not yes, yes. I like this. You think very well. Okay, I can't do no armor, but I can do almost no armor. The design would be so much better if I just dropped a gun, but I'm not willing to. I wonder, can I, like, finagle it? <gasps> Wait. Oh my gosh. Guys. <laughs> we did it. Oh, I have to remove some torpedoes. You know, it'll be worth it. 
<laughs> We've done it! It lives! <laughs> it lives! Okay, when I saw a person appear for a second, I thought it was going to be Tillman. And I was just going to, like, fall out of my chair. <laughs> Are you are you guys ready for this? <laughs> it has 810 24 inch long lances. <laughs> this is the best. Okay. So, do we have stats for how much explosive filler is in a 24 inch torpedo in real life? Can we multiply that by 810 and see how many explosives this thing has on it? I need to know. Going off the stats of a British 24-inch. Uh-huh. Oh, we're firing more. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it has begun. 620. Oh, these... Yeah, these are even bigger, I think. 600... And 1,000 pounds. Okay, I'm going to pause this for a moment. I need to pull something up. <laughs> Let's go to New York and see what happens. 601 kiloton. Uh, how much is that compared to... Let's see. So that's around the largest pure fission weapon tested by the USA. <laughs> if this thing blows up, it's going to wipe out a small city. <laughs> We've already fired a hundred torpedoes. There are a hundred torpedoes in the water. Alright, they're coming. Oh, something got hit. It dealt 9,000 damage! It almost dealt 10,000! This is the real-time speed. This is how fast they go. <laughs> Dylan would fade from his orgasm upon seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> the music is very appropriate. <laughs> Each torpedo is dealing 10,000 damage. Oh man, I... These, like, you know, 1890s armored cruisers, they're very threatening to my super battleship. I need to use appropriate force. Is he going to dodge this? Oh. No. <laughs> appropriate force. Th this, is, this is the worst thing I've ever built. This should not exist. I've dealt... 181,000 damage with, with my torpedo. I just... What? They destroyed the torpedoes! <laughs> How much damage did that deal? Oh, I can't see. Some parts are badly placed. I agree. I agree with you, game. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. This was an amazing stream. I'm very glad I played this game. Just very fun. And I'll probably make a YouTube video on this because that that was so hilarious that I'm struggling to breathe. <laughs> so a successful stream. Thanks, everyone. Uh, have a nice day.